Uh, welcome. So uh, today, uh, in this category uh, seminar for applied category theory, uh, it's an honor to have uh, Pete Hart, Professor Pete Hart from Institute of Advanced Study, Princeton. あの、プリンストン高等研究所のえっと学際研究担当、あとえっと天文物理学の教授でいらっしゃるピートハット先生をお招きして、それでえっと。You will be talking about interdisciplinary research. Not much on category theory, I suppose, but. Thank you very much. <coughs> and thank you for your invitation to come here to uh, Kyoto University and to RIMS in particular. I have really enjoyed the many discussions we have had in this category, seminar, category theory seminar. And indeed, I will not say much about category theory, but. <coughs> At the end, I hope I can uh, say something about plans uh, which we have to uh, work on them. So, even though I talk about arrows, most of the arrows are simple arrows, but in the future, hopefully, they will be categorized. So, I will talk about widely interdisciplinary research. And in general, in a discussion between members of two cultures, there are uh, two ingredients that are necessary, whether it's two countries or two fields uh, in academics or basically any two different cultures which have a different background. Both sides must share the explicit knowledge, of course, but both sides must share the tacit knowledge. The tacit knowledge is knowledge which you normally don't talk about, but it is in the background. And if you make it into a picture, if you are Japanese, then in your own consciousness, there are things you know, that you know. And for example, Americans have things that they know, and they can compare it. But there are many things that you know, but you don't know that you know them. <laughs> it is automatic. Uh, you have learned it, and you have forgotten it. You can just use it at both sides. And the question is, if you cannot understand that from each other, it is very hard to understand the other. It is very hard to collaborate. So any interdisciplinary collaboration has to uh, figure out how to understand each other on the level of uh, tacit knowledge, not only explicit knowledge. This is also a question already. If a mathematician and a physicist work together, there is very different knowledge. The physicist has to learn more mathematics, the mathematics, math, mathematician has to learn more physics. But that is the simple part. The difficult thing is to get a physics feeling and a mathematics feeling of how to look at the problem. So each side can, of course, use its own tacit knowledge, but they don't usually know, uh, they usually don't know their own tacit knowledge. Therefore, each side has to become aware of its own knowledge first. What is needed is a kind of knowledge of your own knowledge. So, if you go to the previous um, picture, then before you can tell the other person uh, what you really mean, you first have to tell yourself, and then you can communicate with others. So I will give a very, very simple example, which happened to me a few years ago, and I was really surprised to read that. In the New York Times newspaper, an American journalist flew in an airplane with a Japanese prime minister who was visiting America, and a group of Japanese journalists. So most of the people in the plane were Japanese, only one journalist from the New York Times was joining the Japanese group. And the American journalist wrote, the Japanese journalists continue, continue to complain about the heat. And of course, I immediately understood what the problem was, that he did not realize that Atsuri Desne has an implicit or a tacit meaning, which is quite different from the explicit meaning. The explicit meaning is that it is hot, isn't it? But the tacit meaning can be many. It can have many different meanings depending on context. It can be a friendly sharing of feelings. It can be a sign that you can take off your coat, as I just did, <laughs> and necktie to be more informal. So then the journalist, the Japanese journalist said, Atsui Desne, they didn't mean it's really terrible, really hot. They meant quite different things. And the American did not understand it because he did not know Japanese. 
So for the American journalist, the visible knowledge was those Japanese are just strange people, they keep complaining. <laughs> and for the Japanese, it was the invisible knowledge, let us be more relaxed. So there was a complete misunderstanding of communication between the two sides. And in interdisciplinary research, if a mathematician works with a physicist or a chemist or biologist or biologist with physicist, I have seen so many examples of Atsui Desne <laughs> in many, many different uh, ways. So if you make this knowledge diagram, then from both sides there is explicit and basic knowledge, one side and the other side. And normally, we only can exchange the explicit knowledge. This is all that we normally know if we do not reflect on what we know. The usage diagram is different from the knowledge diagram. We can use our own tacit knowledge. We use it all the time. So I use my knowledge. I exchange it with somebody else. The other person also uses their knowledge. So this is all that we normally can use, even without knowing or reflecting on it. And what we need to learn before we can do interdisciplinary collaboration, Gakusai Tekina, Kenkyu, Natomani, we have to first learn to reflect. Then, uh, if we learn to reflect, we can begin to know <coughs> our own test of knowledge. If we not only use a knowledge, but actually know it, then we can have better communication with other people. And then, in principle, we can share, we can share the knowledge of knowledge. If we know our own knowledge, then we can also explain it to other people, and also from the other side. When we know more of what we know, we can share more knowledge. It is very simple, but... Uh, Generally, it is not done. Generally, people come together and they share the tested their, their explicit knowledge. And then they are surprised they cannot collaborate. So the usage of knowledge going from the, <coughs> going from the sh uh, shared knowledge, the usage of knowledge of knowledge, uh, when we can share more, we can use the, the knowledge. So we can use not only our own knowledge, but we can also use the tested knowledge of the other side. You see, it's not yet category theory, but there are many arrows. So <laughs> it's a step. And actually, I think some of this can be uh, put in the language of category theory, but maybe soon, someday. So to sum up this part of my talk, within a single community, knowledge of knowledge is not required. Knowledge is enough. You don't need knowledge of knowledge. Use, just use static knowledge. There, is, there are no problems. Between two different communities, we need several steps. Internal usage of tacit knowledge has to be, needs to be made explicit. This knowledge of knowledge needs to be communicated. Only then can both sides use tacit knowledge of both sides. So, this, what I have said so far, is the minimum, the minimum that you need to do interdisciplinary collaborations. But now I will argue that this is not enough. It is more than what people generally do, but the situation is more complicated. <coughs> Let us go back. So what I just said looks reasonable and logical, but can we really transform tacit knowledge into explicit knowledge? I have made it very easy. I draw an arrow from uh, tacit knowledge, from implicit knowledge to explicit knowledge. But can we really do that? Let us again look at our first example. The explicit meaning, atsuri desner, it is hot, isn't it? The tacit meaning, atsuri desner, friendly sharing of feelings or the scientific of your code. The question is, can we really expect to translate Atsui Desner into a single formula, a single meaning, something that we can transmit in a single message from one person to another? Mm.